This is John Gallant, and today I'm going to quickly show you how to use the new Azure IoT Endpoints and Routes feature. This new feature allows you to route IoT Hub messages to alternate endpoints based on some rules that you define in the Azure IoT portal. As you can see in the diagram on the left, we have IoT Hub messages coming in and flowing to the default Event Hub, which is what took place before this new feature was introduced. With IoT Hub Routes, you define custom endpoints, and today we support event hubs, service bus queues, and service bus topics. And then you define routes and rules to send messages to the custom endpoints based on message properties. This feature is helpful for when you want to separate messages based on, say, a tenant ID or a location, or you can just use it to route messages to alternate endpoints to suit your application needs. In addition to this video, I also created a blog post at bit.ly IoT Routes that will walk you through how to set up your IoT hub, configure endpoints, routes, and send to an event hub. So if you don't have one already, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the Azure portal and create a new IoT hub. So once you have your IoT hub created, you'll notice two new options down here. You have endpoints and routes. You click on endpoints. You'll notice that up on top, we have built-in endpoints, cloud or device feedback, and events. And we can add additional endpoints down here. We're going to click on add, give it a name. We're going to select the type event hub. You'll notice here it says that we don't have any event hubs in this subscription. So what we're going to do is create an event hub. Once your event hub is created, you're going to want to go here and create an event hub instance. You're going to go back to your dashboard, find your IoT hub endpoints, and add that event hub endpoint. So now you have your event hub endpoint configured. Now we want to tell IoT Hub to send specific messages to this event hub using routes. Click on routes and then click on add. We're going to name our routing rule. We're going to say that we want the data source to come from device messages. And we want our query to be tenant equals one, two, three, four. Location equals Seattle. So this looks at the properties of the message. It does not inspect the payload of the message. It just looks at the properties. And so you give it a name and value. And in this case, we're looking at message properties, tenant and location. If the tenant is one, two, three, four, and location is Seattle, it will send to this event hub endpoint. So once your rule is created, you will now see it in your rule list. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create an IoT hub device do that in Device Explorer. You can download this from the Azure IoT SDK's repo on GitHub. You're going to want to enter your IoT Hub connection string. So you're going to go here to Shared Access Policies. You can just use IoT Hub Owner. You're going to copy this connection string to Device Explorer. You're going to click Update. And then inside of Management tab, you're going to want to create a device. Click Create. Then you're going to want to copy the connection string for that device and paste it into a temporary location like notepad so now what we want to do is send messages to iot hub using the same properties that we set up in the rule tenant and location i added this sample code out here on github you can see the link in my blog post as well basically what it does is it sets up the properties here for you so you have an example so i'm going to go ahead and create a vs code project first thing i'm going to do is replace the device connection string with the one i got earlier from device explorer just going to go here and paste that in. And then depending on your needs, you would update the properties here. Then I'm going to open up the integrated terminal inside of VS Code and install the necessary NPM packages from Azure IoT. So NPM I Azure IoT device. I'll install those node packages locally. And in this case, we're going to use the AMQP protocol. So we'll install that package. Azure IoT device AMQP. And then all we'll have to do to start sending messages to Azure IoT Hub is called node index.js. That will use the connection string I provided, connect to Azure IoT, and start sending messages. Typically, you could monitor these messages using Device Explorer, but because we're using the routes feature, these messages are not routed to messages slash events, which this is monitoring. So instead, we're going to use the Service Bus Explorer. You can find this out on GitHub, and there's a link to it on my blog. 
What Service Bus Explorer allows you to do is monitor messages coming into Event Hub. So what I did is just a git clone of the repo from GitHub and then just opened it up in Visual Studio and just F5'd it. So I'm going to go File, Connect. I'm going to enter a connection string here for the Event Hub. So I'm going to go back to the Azure portal. I'm going to go into Shared Access Policies and copy that connection string. Click OK. And if you right click on dollar default and say create consumer group listener and then click start, you'll start to see messages come in. Click on the events tab, you'll see the IoT Hub messages and the custom properties that we set. So this new routing feature opens up so many doors for integration scenarios with IoT Hub. Currently, you can send messages to Event Hub, Service Bus Queue, and Service Bus Topic, and then on to any other further processing you need for your application. For example, you could send it to Logic Apps, you could have a custom reader, and the possibilities are endless there. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helps you get started with the new IoT Hub routes feature, and just let me know if you have any questions.